Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Habel from BioRide Laboratories, and in this poster we're going to talk about how to go, how easy it is to go from a serial linear protein purification into an automated protein purification. In this example, we'll be using uh, a tagged protein, a GFP with a his tag. However, this is applicable to whether you have a tagged, untagged, or even an antibody. So, for the NGC system that we're using, well, we have it currently set up in the multi-D mode, in the sense that all of our columns will be loaded onto one column switching valve, and when they're eluded, they'll go through the detector to an outlet valve, they'll come back into a loop valve, where they'll be stored into a secondary loop, and then from the secondary loop, they'll be injected onto the next column. This can be done in series again and again. In this iteration, we'll be talking about a four column purification. However, you could do up to a 10 column purification if necessary, or multiple samples on multiple columns. Uh, the example we'll show is a GFP with a his tag. So that workflow goes IMAC. Normally I would dialyze or dilute just to get lower the ionic strength and get rid of the imidazole. Then we'll go to an ion exchange and finally polish with a size exclusion. In the automated form, we do the same sequence, but just with one button push. Uh, traditionally, this uh, sequence may take you two or three days, given the fact for gels and staining. However, this can be reduced down to five and a half hours if necessary. Um, the good part about this is in order to make the multi-D method, basically you're just gonna take all the information that you're gonna generate doing it sequentially the first time anyway. So, for example, for iMac, you're going to optimize the sample volume, the percent B elution window, and the elution volume. And again, for each individual column, you're going to have these variables that you'll, again, identify and then incorporate into a single method. All right, so in our first example, we can look at iMac optimization. And here we have uh, just a simple percent B column wash scouting. So the Chrome Lab software gives a very easy to use scouting feature where you give it a starting point and you give it what increment you'd want to increase or decrease. So in this case, I said, let's start at 0% B and we're going to increase the percent B wash by 5% um, and we're going to go from 0 to 25%. And in the results uh, that we see in the analysis, you can see at 0%, um, you know, everything binds, everything elutes as you would expect. But as soon as you put a small 5% B wash, uh, we get rid of a lot of contaminants and even this slight variant of the GFP. And this is representative of what our default wash is because most everyone recommends a 3% wash. However, if you go up to 10%, what you'll notice is you actually lose a bit more of the shoulder right here while maintaining the GFP. I can actually use Chrome Lab software to do peak analysis on the 495 peak and show that they're within 2% peak area of each other. But as soon as I go from 10 to 15%, I start actually losing more GFP and this peak decreases. By 20%, the protein's completely eluded off during the wash. Why is this important? Um, it's actually more important downstream for the column after the iMac. So here we see what happens when we do the 3% default B wash. Uh, and you'll see all of these contaminants, which are, you know, the good part is they're being separated, but we have all of these shoulders around our peak, which may make selecting this peak a little bit more difficult for purity. However, if we do the optimized 10% B wash, you can see there are very few shoulder peaks on the side, which makes getting a really pure sample much easier. So this just emphasizes the importance of wanting to optimize every individual condition for every individual column. Next, we can go to the ion exchange, and again, we can optimize. Here we do simple pH scouting, so I can put a buffer blending module into the NGC and tell it, start with TRIS 7.5, and then for the entire method, increase the pH of the whole method by half a pH unit. And again, we can see the differences in binding, or in this case, in the elution. Uh, and as you would expect, as we go to a higher pH, uh, we start to see more contaminants binding uh, as well. And again, you would just pick the optimized pH. In this case, I think we want pH 8. Uh, and then you could then take that pH and say, okay, now that I know my optimized pH, what's the best elution profile? And again, the NGC software makes it easy to do a percent B scout. And the good part here, the comparison is, is this is one step within the method this is the entire method, and then this is one phase in a method. So you're able to scout three separate areas of a single method, uh, depending on what you need. Uh, 
And so finally, again, you just take all of this and we want to combine it into a single workflow. And here, we just want to emphasize that when you do a, a typical single column method, you use these four phases, equilibration, sample application, column wash, and elution. Now, Chrome Lab comes with 2D uh, templates, so already built-in templates for when you have two columns. And what we want to emphasize is you do the exact same steps for each of the two columns. You may just switch the order up a bit. And then for the 4D method that we're talking about here, again, we do the exact same steps. And in fact, you can take the phases from the 2D templates, copy and paste them to create this 4D method. And in fact, I copied and pasted every phase that you see here with the exception of one, the ion exchange elution. Uh, the difference that I had to make the elution is I took this elution phase and I just added a simple change valve step to make sure that my column was in line and that's really all I had to do. Everything else I literally just copied and pasted in. So this one equilibration can become these four equilibration steps just by editing the port position. So this method took me about 20 to 25 minutes to make even though it's for a very complex four column uh, protein purification workflow. And just to show, of course, that this works, here we have the chromatogram for this multi-D iMac purification. Uh, we see the iMac, it's desalted. So uh, again, this is gonna be eluted from the iMac. We're gonna store this in a loop. It's then gonna go to the desalting column. And we see the desalting works because there's our imidazole peak. We store this peak here into a, a second loop. Then it's loaded on to our exchange column. Then that's eluted off and stored into a third loop and then finally sent through the size exclusion for polishing. And the best part about Multi-D is the fact that it's so reproducible. So whether it's, whether if I press the button or if someone else in my lab presses the button, you'll get the same result every time. And so this method right here is actually 11 hours. So these three 11 hour runs overlay on top of each other almost identically. And then of course you can then calculate simple recovery. So here, for example, we can maximize or optimize this multi-D purification run to optimize recovery so we're at about a 90% recovery rate. So once again, what we're doing is we're removing human variability. So whether I decide on which fractions I want to pull together or whether another scientist in the lab does that, uh, that increases the batch-to-batch -batch variability that you might see. So uh, this makes it very reproducible and also over time. So if I need to purify this protein now, and then six months, a year later, someone comes back and asks me to purify it again, having this method pretty much guarantees that I'm gonna get the same result every time. And any variability that you do see can therefore be attributed more to protein expression variability. For more information about this topic, please go to biorad.com.